All right, hopefully this is working. Marshman Mass on here for our first ever YouTube Live. Uh, hopefully this works out. If it does, we're going to do it every week. If not, it'll never see the light of day again. But uh, hopefully this works out. We're going to talk about recent fishing, upcoming fishing, and also hopefully answer some of your questions. Um, so if you got a question, go ahead and throw it out there. Maybe it'll show up here and I'll get to answer it. Um, hopefully this works out well. Uh, but a lot of people have asked me since yesterday's video dropped about my trip to Delacroix uh, last week that I mentioned in that video, and it was a disaster. It was absolutely a disastrous fishing trip. Uh, I was very sick, uh, pushed the envelope, should not have gone uh, so quickly after recovering from the flu. Really, I hadn't recovered yet. Uh, and we, we just did terribly. My friend Jonathan Ryan and I went, um, both have a lot of experience fishing in that area, both have a lot of fishing experience in general, but man, it was awful. We found the trifecta, we found clean water, we found moving water, and we found bait, uh, everything you want to search for to have success, but we just did not have success. It was brutal. Uh, did hook two fish. <laughs> the first was a freshwater catfish that I fought for about a minute. And then, uh, hey, Jake, I see you. We get to that question in a minute. First was a freshwater catfish that I fought for about a minute uh, before it got off. And to tell you how sick I was, um, literally fought the fish for 45 to 60 seconds and had to sit down after it got off. I was that exhausted. Uh, it just zapped every, every bit of strength I had. Um, so I should not have been on the water. But um, also hooked a fish late in the day that I'm pretty sure was a redfish, fought it for about 10 seconds, and my hook broke. I don't think I've ever had a hook break, but literally the hook broke uh, and the fish got away. So it was just kind of one of those days. Uh, I got back to the marina, talked to Captain Jack Payne, who owns Sweetwater Marina, and he said that's how it's been. He said it's just been really, really tough. Uh, in fact, in the previous week, he had only heard about one speckle trout being caught, and it was caught in alligator pass. Other than that, people had really, really been struggling. Um, now, I'm happy to report my buddy Larry Fry went this week on Tuesday, caught 14 speckle trout. I'm not going to say where he caught them. wouldn't be fair to him, but uh, he caught 14. He said he really could have made a few more drifts and probably caught 25. Um, it's him and another guy, so it would be half a limit. Not bad, uh, but uh, he left him to go find some bigger fish, and, and it just didn't happen. But um, So things maybe are picking up. Also got a great report about uh, redfish on the bottom at uh, at Oak River, so and, and those those fish are biting uh, dead shrimp. Not exactly my thing, but you know, hey, uh, if you want to go out there and catch some some redfish? That's that's uh, that's definitely a way to do it. I'm sure, you could probably catch them on plastics as well. Uh, focus on the cuts in uh, in Oak River, particularly on a fallen tide, and, and you'll definitely have success uh, with that. But um, also got a great report from a buddy of mine named John McQueen. He fishes out of Dulac, uh, and what John does this time of year. I actually did a story on him maybe three, four years ago. Uh, he fishes kind of small bayous ditches between ponds. Um, that moving water in between there, uh, he really feels like shines this time of year, the month of February. Now he catches a lot of fish throwing topwater baits and stick baits, uh, but he said he only caught one on top the other day. Uh, but he did really well throwing shoo shoo lures and blue moon color. He said the slug bait. Uh, that delivered for him. Also some on uh, Mural or Little John. So uh, that's a technique that definitely should transfer to other areas. But I've got to say that that Southern Terrebonne Marsh has been kind of a shining star here in recent weeks for speckled trout. Trout fishing has been tough. I mean, really, really tough everywhere. But that's an area that, that, is, uh, that is definitely producing. So, of course, uh, here we are heading up to another weekend. And I don't, I don't know... Somebody ticked off the fishing gods at some point because every weekend seems like the weather is just complete garbage, and that trend is going to continue this weekend. It's going to be tough again. Uh, lots and lots of rain. I'm supposed to fish a tournament, first club tournament of the year on Saturday. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be canceled or not. If it's not, it's going to be a miserable fishing day. It's just going to be really, really tough. But, um, uh, you know, if you do want to go out, we do have a good tide range. Uh, and the winds are not supposed to be too extreme, uh, 10 to 15, so, you know, not too bad. Uh, if you can get some breaks in that weather, perhaps maybe keep an eye on that radar. 
you should be able to catch some fish. I would focus on reds, bass, and sockele rather than speckled trout, just because the trout fishing is just too tough right now. Um, but uh, what else? What else? Uh, uh, oh, keep in mind, if you do want to fish bass and sockele this weekend, and you typically fish rivers, all this rain we've gotten lately has, has raised up these river levels. Uh, in fact, I saw a little alert this morning that the pearl's going to barely crest above flood stage. So, you know, that makes things tough. When you get those rising rivers, they're very dirty in the wintertime, nice and cold. Uh, it's just, it just stinks. It's just not very, very good fishing. So, um, hey, go bear outdoors. I see you. <laughs> What's up, bro? Uh, anyway, so uh, uh, keep that in mind. If you do go, wait perhaps until those rivers start falling if you want to go fish the rivers. But, you know, you can catch some fish definitely this weekend at Chaffalai Basin, maybe down toward the Gulf Canal south of, um, uh, south of Lafitte, you know, that, that southwest Wego area. That's, uh, that's, that's a good area uh, uh, to fish this, uh, this time of year for Sokolé, no doubt about it. Um, yeah, and something I did want to mention, I do get a lot of questions about... Um, uh, like exactly where I was fishing in a video. And, and I generally don't answer those questions. And it's, it's not because I don't want to reveal my secret spots. I really don't have secret spots. I just kind of go out and fish. And yeah, I might start in an area that I had success in the previous trip, but eight or nine times out of 10, I don't catch fish there that day and have to go explore and find some, some additional fish. Conditions change, fish move. Um, so what I really hope in the videos is that viewers learn how to duplicate success uh, rather than, you know, perhaps get an X marks a spot on a, you know, particular spot, going there and then being disappointed because it doesn't produce. And, and that's really the case more times than not. And, and um, again, it's really more just patterns and, and, and getting on your trolling motor, staying on your trolling motor, covering some water and finding some feed and fish, finding baits that they want that particular day, uh, that'll benefit you much more uh, in the long run than just saying, hey, go here and see if, you, see if these fish will bite, because what if they don't? Then what do you do? Then where do you go from there? Uh, so it's really more about discovering techniques. Um, anyway, any questions out there about, um, about what's going on right now fishing-wise? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, Heath Martin mentioned the, uh, the office. Um, <laughs> giveaway that we did in the recent video man i was really stunned how quickly somebody got it a guy named grant nicolosi uh got it in no time uh it's on like a prawn that yawns at dawn of course andy said that in the office and uh definitely the office is the best show in the history of tv uh as i mentioned in the video if you haven't seen it yet go check it out it's a uh, bass fishing video that i just dropped yesterday uh but during the week that i had the flu spent a lot of time just watching episodes of the office because hey you know you don't feel like doing anything might as well do something that's kind of uh kind of uplifting uh yeah go bear outdoors asking when's the next video uh to be honest i don't know i'm hoping to go sock lake fishing tomorrow afternoon it's really going to be weather dependent um got some other things that i'm working on today um converting some videos uh, to make them facebook friendly we'll, we'll post some of those over there but um I uh, hope to go cycling fishing tomorrow afternoon and, and get a video after uh, out of that. Also got a trip planned on Monday with my buddy Chris Macaluso in the Atchafalaya Basin, going to uh, chase some cycle and some bass as well. So hopefully that works out. Hopefully that that uh, that river doesn't doesn't uh, doesn't rise uh, because the the fish in the basin has been good uh, from what I hear. I don't I don't fish the basin a whole lot, but uh, but I have a lot of friends who do. Um, so again, that place like all those river influence systems uh much better on a fall or even steady than it is on a rise when I mean, you get those rises it gets it gets really really tough uh kind of like fish in venice you know if you fish down there a lot you definitely with that river falling you want to fall in tide that just stacks things in your favor um generally like falling water no matter where i'm fishing i just think it makes things easier it makes the fish much more predictable any other questions out there uh feel free to ask them uh, ho hopefully you guys have some time off coming up next week. The weather doesn't look all that great. I just looked at the forecast before I came on, even next week uh, for Mardi Gras week. Um, man, all kind of questions coming in. Uh, do you use live bait or artificial? Always artificial. I never use live bait. I don't like it. I hate it. Um, uh, I just think it's just, 
I like to fool fish. That's kind of what, what is fun for me. I don't ever want to use live bait because it's just kind of feeding them what they already eat anyway. And for me, the fun of fishing is not reeling in a fish. Um, reeling enough fish in my career that that's, it's more figuring them out. That's, that's what I enjoy. Um, seeing if I can figure them out and then cracking that code and then having success. Basically, catching those fish is just validation that what I figured out is, is, actually, uh, is actually right and productive. Um, but uh, as I mentioned, before I get interrupted, but, uh, but next week, it uh, looks like 50% chance of rain, at least Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, which I know would be the days when people have off. Maybe you're a Mardi Gras person, you're going to go hang out uh, on, the, on the streets and go catch some beads and have some fun with family and all that. I'm not a Mardi Gras person. I do like to go on a couple of parades a year, but uh, uh, generally that Tuesday off is, is for me used for fishing, which I guess has really kind of worked for me. But, <laughs> but anyway, it all kind of just melts together and... Uh, uh, hopefully we're doing some fishing next week. Hopefully the weather will cooperate. Um, any other questions? Throw them out there now while we got got uh, got time. Um, I love the underwater videos last week. I hope you do more of them. Yeah, Heath. Thanks for the uh, for the comment. Uh, I loved it as well. In fact, uh, I think I mentioned that it's the first time I've ever put lures in a swimming pool. And and uh, boy, I could tell just before, even before I got home and reviewed the footage that it was just going to be really, really good stuff. Um, uh, I just, I just, just seeing them from above the water surface was enlightening. And then to actually view those lures kind of from the fish's angle, uh, man, it's just, uh, just really, really good stuff. Uh, if you haven't seen those videos yet, um, uh, go bear. No, I don't, I don't, we don't have a website, but uh, we will definitely be getting some, uh, some merch coming up sometime soon. Uh, sometime this year, so I'll definitely keep you uh, updated on that. But, um, but yeah, just you know, if you haven't seen the video, uh, basically I, I compared how a lure looks with a one eighth ounce jig head compared to a three eighth ounce jig head, and it looks really, really different, no doubt about it. Uh, in fact, you know, there's been many times where I really downsized my jig head size, uh, and I know for a fact it made a difference. It helped my catches, um, but. Uh, what I was surprised to find was how much better the lure looked on a 3 8 ounce. It gave the tail a whole lot more action. Uh, now, of course, when you got that slow fall with the, with the 1 8 it's m much more likely that it resembles a shrimp. Uh, but, you know, sometimes you don't want to resemble a shrimp necessarily. Maybe the fish are feeding on pogies or mullets or something like that. You want to imitate a bait fish. Uh, when that's the case, maybe you're better off with a little bit heavier jig head. Also did a quarter ounce, but really, in all honesty, the bait looked closer to the 1 8 ounce with the quarter than it did... To the three eighth ounce. Now, something I definitely uh, uh, discovered, really, it was kind of confirmed for me in that video, was you want to fish as light of a jig head as you can under a cork. No doubt about it. Um, that light one sixteenth ounce jig head, that bait just slow falled, fall, slow fell, looked like a shrimp, uh, much more so than when it was on a quarter ounce. It just kind of rapidly fell down, went to the end of the leader, and just kind of sat there. But the 116th, it would just kind of float down, just like a shrimp does. And you pop the cork, and it pop up, just like a shrimp. Um, so go with the 116th ounce um, fishing under cork. Uh, and somebody also, I saw, asked a question about uh, when I fished the length of the pool throwing braid compared to mono. Um, the differences in the lure were kind of subtle. I tried to work the rod real similarly, although it wasn't as easy as I thought because that mono, you just kind of feel like you got to pop it more because you can feel that elasticity. Uh, but I tried to work it real similar. Um, but uh, somebody mentioned Chaz Champagne. Then, you know, those guys who fish Lake Pontchartrain a lot, and I've got tremendous respect for those guys. Chaz Champagne, um, Chris Robert, Bubby Lamy, all those guys, very, very good fishermen. And they work the rod really, really hard. Now, they're fishing mono. I'm a braid guy, so if I did that, my lure would just be hopping way, way, way up. Um, but, you know, those guys almost invariably get their hits after that pop when that lure is settling back down. You know, you think about the times where you cast out, and before you even engage your reel, you have a fish on. Uh, that's a fish that hit on that initial fall, and, uh, and when you engage, he was already on there. That's essentially what those guys are doing. Each time they pop that, that bait and it goes up, it's almost like that initial fall again, and that's when they get a lot of their bites. Um, just saw a question saying, what is your favorite spec lure? Man, that's, whew, that's tough to answer. I can't say that I have one. Uh, definitely fish saw plastic paddle tails more than anything else. 
Um, and, and color depends on water clarity. I'm a big believer in fishing clear water with clear baits. Uh, definitely like the holy jolly colored matrix shad. Also like the shrimp creole color. Uh, but then in, in dirty water, uh, I like the baits that have some vibration in the tail. I like the, uh, the egret wedge tails. Uh, those work very, very well in dirt, dirtier water. They work in clear water too, believe me. But uh, uh, I tend to side more with those in, in, in dirtier water. Uh, and as far as color goes, you know, dirty water, you want to fish something that's dark. It's kind of almost seems illogical, like you should maybe fish something bright in, in dirty water. But uh, no, I tend to tend to side with darker baits uh, in dirty water. Definitely feel like uh, feel like that makes a difference and and uh, increases your catches. Uh, are you a Shushu fan? Heath Martin is asking. Um, I got to be honest, I've never fished him. Uh, I, I mentioned John McQueen. If you're just tuning in, maybe you didn't hear that. But John McQueen earlier in the week had great success throwing that bait uh he said the slug one and i don't know enough about him to even comment about the different types but uh he had great success on that bait and i have heard good things about him just haven't haven't had an opportunity to use them um hopefully that'll change sometime uh very very soon uh okay somebody sal it looks like just asked what is your the best fish you like to eat that's actually an interesting question um i probably would have said flounder but I've done a number of taste tests. Uh, we've had a few trips where we caught like eight, nine, ten species. And what I love to do when that's the case is get home, keep the fish separate, after I clean them, of course, keep them separate so I know what is what, and do taste tests with people. Sit them down, invite a bunch of friends over, and cook them the exact same way. Sit people down and, and get them, you know, fish A, fish B, fish C, fish D, and to rank them in order. Uh, and the funny thing is... Uh, I've done this a few times, and I always cook the fish the same way. I always deep fry them. Um, uh, the number one fish, without question, deep fried, you would think it would be speckled trout, flounder, something like that. Always, it is always redfish. Now, uh, I don't keep big reds. I don't keep a redfish over 20 inches, uh, so it's smaller reds, 16 to 20 inch reds. It always wins, all the time. Uh, it's really kind of mind boggling, but um, black drum does very well. Speckled trout typically is about middle of the pack. Uh, I, I've, I've, uh, and, and flounder almost invariably is last, dead last. Uh, it's people's least favorite fish, at least fried. You know, obviously stuffed flounder and all that stuff is really good, but uh, fried flounder, pff, people do not like it. Also, croaker. I got an uncle coming in from Texas and wants to fish. My boat's in the shop, so where's a good place to take him fishing? Do you have a boat or not? If you don't have a boat, uh, man, it's going to be really tough. I did run a story. Uh, a few years ago on top 12 bank spots in Louisiana, if you go to NOLA.com and top, top, uh, and search top bank spots, you, you'll see that. The you know, key with bank fishing is definitely to, uh, to get that when it's right because you, 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 you're pretty limited uh, and, and you, know, you can't really move around a whole lot. So you've got to go when it's right, uh, but go check that out. Channel mullet, I saw somebody mention that. Yeah, very, very good eating fish. I can't say I've ever included channel mullet in my taste test. What I have included is Atlantic croaker. Uh, croaker's really good to eat. You catch big ones, you know, you get a nice slab of meat off of them. Um, they generally rate around some, somewhere midway, maybe maybe top third uh, when I do the, uh, the the taste test. Sheephead, another very, very underrated fish, always does very, very well in the, uh, in the taste test. I know a lot of people hate them. They just throw them away. They got another name for them. It's not sheephead, but uh, we won't discuss that here. But uh, very, very good eating fish. Not nearly as hard to clean as, uh, as, as people say it is. Now, you don't get a whole lot of meat off a sheephead relative to the size of the fish, uh, but they're really, really good to eat. Um, anyway, any other questions? Um, anything on your mind about, uh, about fishing as we're coming into the, uh, the end of winter, um, coming into the spring? Oh, I do want to mention end of winter. These water temps are beginning to warm up. We do, if you look at the forecast, there's a lot of rain in it, but it is, uh, we got temps in the 70s. Please don't ignore the topwater baits this time of year. Most people do. People don't think of uh, what info do you use not to run aground in January and February. Um, okay, I'll get to that in a minute. But um, people kind of ignore topwater baits this time of year, but they're very, very productive. Uh, in fact, I catch generally, I don't know if it's going to be true this year because this year is really screwy because all the cold weather we had, I generally catch my biggest trout of the year in the month of February on topwater baits. Um, but I do think. Uh, not to be the bearer of bad news, but I think it's going to be a really, really tough spring and summer for speckled trout. I think those 
Arctic blast that we had in the winter definitely took their toll on the trout. I don't think it's going to be, you know, like terrible. I don't think it's going to be terrible. I think it's just going to be below average. But keep in mind, like I always remind people, below average in South Louisiana is uh, is far better than, than great fishing anywhere else. It really is. We're all just spoil rotten. We just absolutely are. Uh, would you keep a gar fish caught two through them back? Seemed like it would be hard to clean. I've 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 eaten gar balls gar balls as a kid. Um, wasn't my favorite, so no, I don't ever keep gar fish. Uh, just and I um, don't catch them a whole lot. But I, I remember catching one with my son that was about six feet long a few years ago. Obviously, I just cut my line. Didn't feel like dealing with it. But um, no, yeah, I, I know that I know some people make them. They say they're delicious, but. Uh, not my thing. I'd rather deal with the uh, the more manageable <laughs> fish that we catch down here. Um, I saw somebody ask, "Do you crawfish?" Uh, yeah, actually, I do crawfish. I don't do it a whole lot, but uh, but I do enjoy. Grew up doing it a tremendous amount with my maternal grandfather, and uh, definitely enjoy doing it. Um, it. Seems like the guys who have the best success crawfish and use the, uh, the the pillow traps and go into the into the swamps um and and uh it's just not something i typically do i'm usually trout fishing that time of year um but uh love eating them that's for sure how often do you fish a weedless spoon um well the next time i fish a weedless spoon will be the first time in about five or six years just don't fish it a lot and, and people have great success with it uh i know that i'm, I'm not a big spinnerbait guy i'm not a big spoon guy um and they produce it's just not my favorite thing i'm i'm really really big on jigging whether i'm fishing trout or bass or reds or whatever i like uh throwing a bait working it and feeling that hard tap uh, as a fish hits it uh, i caught a couple of bass uh a few days ago on a on a crankbait but that's kind of again that's along those same lines for me it's just kind of casting and retrieving um, and there are guys who are good at that, who are, you know, really know how to work a crankbait. I'm just not one of them. Just not my, my chosen way to fish. Don't fish spoons. I don't, f I do fish a spinnerbait a little bit, particularly in bass tournaments. Uh, but it's just not my chosen way to fish, uh, that crankbaits. I love stick baits. However, I love that. I love working a stick bait, uh, and feeling that fish come up and nail it and just kind of ripping the rod out of your hands. I really, really enjoy that. Uh, maybe somebody I can go out with you and, and, and fish a crankbait. Uh, you can educate me, but uh, it's just not my not my favorite way to fish. Any other questions out there? Anybody watching got something you just uh, want to talk about fishing fishing wise? Um, better days are ahead. I know that. What's good site to check tide ranges and stuff? What are your thoughts on summer fishing? Those hot days when there's no wind. Any tips? I'm sure, we'll talk about summer as it gets closer. I hate summer. Uh, it's absolutely my least favorite time of the year. Um, it's, uh, it's just, it's just terrible. Wyclosky Bayou, you know, it's not still good and it's not anywhere near cold enough. That's, that's really a special deal when, uh, when those Arctic blasts come through and those fish just get stacked up there. You got to go when it's right. Uh, take a day off of work, whatever, when it's right, you need to go immediately and then forget about it. Um, years ago, I saw you fishing a kick a mullet. Have you used them recently? You know, I gotta be honest. I really haven't. Um, and I don't know why it's like kind of sometimes baits just fade from your memory and you just don't use them and you get set on other baits or whatever but that is an excellent excellent lure uh it's it's situational without question it's situational um but uh no i haven't fished it in years i haven't i really haven't and it's it's uh, i don't i don't i don't know why i just haven't um but as far as sites to go look at um if you like to fish a lot you should always be checking buoys always i mean i check them daily whether I'm going fishing or not, it doesn't matter. I want to know what the water's doing, what the water temps are doing, what the wind's doing. Uh, you can go to nola.com slash outdoors. Uh, we got a, on the right-hand rail, it says um, real-time information for anglers or something like that. I don't know. You, you can't miss it. It's on the right-hand rail of the page. Uh, click on that. It's got a bunch of the buoys from South Louisiana. Uh, that is an invaluable resource that wasn't available to anglers just, you know, two decades ago. Um, you should always take advantage of that. I look, I'm telling you, look at them every day. Um, when's the last time you fished the Causeway Bridge? Probably a year. It's been a while. Um, Causeway's been tough. You know, Lake Pontchartrain really didn't have a good fall. Uh, fish never got on the trestles. 
uh, not any big numbers. And the causeway, man, just I, guys I know who are way better causeway fishermen than me uh, had big-time trouble. A, a, a guy I know I did a video with a few weeks ago, Justin Bowles, he is a phenomenal causeway angler, uh, and he's, he's almost like given up on the causeway. He hasn't fished it in a while. He hasn't had great success there. Now, typically, those fish do show up back on the causeway in the month of February, and when they do, they are much easier to catch with trolled rattle traps than anything else. Nobody can explain why um, it is uh, it's just bizarre. They, they're there. They're big fish, but they want the trolled rattle traps. They won't hit jigged soft plastics nearly as well. Um, I've had some good trips in February with that guy, Justin, who I mentioned, uh, but it's, uh, I don't know. Uh, bring your bring your rattle traps if you're gonna go, and they should they should show up any day. I mean, it, with this warm weather we got coming, um, now the lake may be muddy. Uh, I'm sure it is. I, I drove over it yesterday in a tornado. It was really really windy, very very rainy, uh, and white caps all on the lake. So I'm sure it's I'm sure it's muddy right now. But uh, give it a couple weeks. Hopefully things will settle down. Take your rattle traps into the causeway. Somebody I saw asked about fishing the western part of of Lake Pontchartrain, don't do it a whole lot. Um, I know guys have success at the power lines, um, out of the suction, you know, whatever they call that area, out of the, the, um, out of the spillway, even coming out of Manshack. Now those fish do get uh, in past Manshack in the fall, uh, October, November, uh, really, really good on either side of the pass, past Manshack and North Pass. Um, I've done that a few times, but it's just generally not part of my routine. Usually I'm doing other stuff by then, by then. How do you like the new iPilot? Um, well, it is the most awesome piece of fishing equipment I've ever owned, period. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a true game changer. It's, I use the spot lock on that thing constantly. I mean, just absolutely constantly. Um, now, some people see on the video that I just dropped yesterday, uh, I hooked a fish, and I had the trolling motor on. It was kind of angled in one direction. And so, of course, I'm paying attention to the fish, not so much of what the, what the boat's doing. And I look up to see that I am racing into a shoreline. So I kind of just stopped and pulled my motor up real quick. Uh, I probably could have hit the spot lock, but it would have whipped around and just had all kind of prop wash there to stop me from going into that bank. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, it, there's a learning curve, definitely, with that, uh, with that remote. Uh, it, but it's not as bad as I thought it would be. I thought it would be m longer duration of, man, I thought I'd kind of really get frustrated with it. I heard, I've heard some people in the past say that they have, um, but uh, no, I, from day one, from the moment I started using it, I saw, thought, okay, this is, this is worth every penny. Uh, and look, I, I'm not sponsored by Minn Kota. I don't get any money by, from Minn Kota, so I'm just being honest with you. Uh, if you can afford one, it is truly a game changer. Absolutely great piece of equipment. Love it, love it. Uh, it, it, it's really for me. Um, it's it's really for me, proven that I don't need a a power pole because I did want a power pole prior to that, but I'd much rather have the the uh, the iPilot. Um, somebody just asked, you know, where are you catching your bass at? I'm not gonna answer that specifically, but uh, uh, you know, I launched the other day out of uh, out of Wrigley's Marina, so that's that's about as as close as I'm gonna tell you. There's just there's area all over there that is very very productive. How skinny water can you get into with that trolling motor? Obviously, that's going to depend on your boat, you know, how, what, what the draft is of your boat. I fish out of an 18-foot G3. It's got actually a little bit of a V on it. It's not a flat-bottom boat. Um, I can get in some pretty skinny water, but I don't have a jack plate on my motor. I don't generally bring a push pole, so I do kind of get into a bind sometimes with, uh, uh, you know, my motor overheating and, you know, trolling motors not uh not going down enough because it's you know inches deep um but uh usually i get out of those binds uh but uh i know sooner or later it's gonna it's gonna blow up on me but yeah jack plates are great um most of those guys who do a lot of shallow water red fishing and stuff run in that really really skinny water they almost all have jack plates uh that definitely can keep you out of a whole lot of trouble all right well hopefully that's it hopefully you enjoyed today's uh video if you did Give it a thumbs up. Uh, leave a comment below. Let us know what you thought. Should we do this every week, or is it uh, maybe just a waste of your time? I don't know, but uh, let us know what you think, and we will see you in the marsh, hopefully. And if we don't, we will see you right here on Marshman Masson on YouTube. Good luck out there. Update us on your fishing success. We definitely want to hear all about it. All right, take care.